Hey guys, welcome back to Snack Time. My name is Ben, and in today's video, I'm going to be taking a look at Rhubarb. So I probably screwed that name up, but basically what it is, is it's a conversion software that it does uh, like converting uh, like from one file type to another, uh, specifically like images and also does PDFs. Well, let me show you a bit about it. It's a very new project. I think you're really going to dig it. All right, so when you get to this page, this is very straightforward. It's basically asking you, you know, present it a file and then pick out your output. And so when I have to convert WebP files to JPEGs or PNGs, I'm usually Googling something and ended up on some random website. Whereas with this, I could just host it myself and I know exactly where to, uh, to use it. So let's see, uh, we have a couple of different options as far as outputs. And I'll also cover the, the matrix of the way it can convert the things it can and can't do. Uh, but surprisingly, it can do a lot. So, but I did have a, a web key file. Let's drop it in here and give me a little uh, preview right there. And it's asking me, you know, um, I'm going to go ahead and convert it to a JPEG. Sure. I can pick my my quality. I can also resize it if I want to. So maybe I wanted to make it uh, like a little bit smaller. Maybe I want to make it um, uh, 1080. And I can keep my aspect ratio. I can uh, crop to fill, stretch, exact dimension. So if I want to do exactly 1080 by 1080, I can do that. I'm going to leave it as uh, like maintain aspect. And you can also optimize the image. Uh, basically, it says uh, reduces file size while maintaining quality. Uh, coming soon, and like I said, this is a very new project, but coming soon, it will also have the ability to remove backgrounds for you. But that's kind of cool. So once you have set up your, your uh, settings here, your parameters, let's click on process image and it's all done. Very easy, very straightforward. We just hit download image and we are ready to go. Uh, another couple of things that it can do, a document processing. So say we have a, a document, like a Word document that we want to, to convert into a, a PDF or maybe the other way around, we can do that here as well by just dragging over our Word document and, and just clicking convert to PDF. Just hit convert document. Very straightforward, very easy. Uh, lastly, we do have uh, batch processing. So if you did have a bunch of files you wanted to do, uh, but you did not want to do them individually, you could drag them in here and then start processing. So let me show you this. I'm going to hit choose files. I'm going to pick a couple of files that I have. And it does a couple of cool things. You can just process them in, you know, each one separately and, and pick what you want. Um, we can also do this. We can, you can pick your, your outputs. We can also merge it onto a single PDF. So if you have a bunch of like images and you want them to be in a PDF as pages, you can do that here. Uh, you can select how many images you want per page, uh, the page size, um, very straightforward, right? It's very easy. Uh, not much to it, but what it does do is very effective and very fast and extremely convenient. So let me show you how you can get this up and going on your own server. All right, so let's pop open Google and just do a search for this guy. I'm just going to add open source on the end of this just to make sure I get what I need. All right, so it is this uh, tool right here. Uh, you can see that not too long ago I made a Reddit post from the author. And if we scroll down, he has everything that we really need. Oh, this is something I wanted you to, to see. So this is the image conversion matrix. Uh, you can check that out and you can see exactly what it can do. And then you come down here and this is the stuff that they're working on, which this is the additional image features like the, the, um, the background removal, optimization and batch processing. So you can kind of see what he has already accomplished, which is a pretty significant amount. All right, so let's deploy this with our uh, Docker and our portainer. So I'm not going to use this command here. I am going to go ahead and pull up my uh, Docker compose file that he has so generously provided to us. And this has all the settings that I'm going to need to put right into Portainer. 
So let's copy this raw file. Let's head over to Portainer. Let's go to Stacks. And let's add a new stack. And let's call this Reball. I know I'm totally screwing that name up, but I do apologize. But doing the best I can here. <laughs> All right, so let's do this. Uh, we probably don't need version, so I'm going to comment that out. Uh, the ports, we are going to run this through Nginx Proxy Manager like I do most everything. However, if you don't, don't want to do that, you want to just keep it local, then just don't comment out these ports. Leave them as uh, 8081 or change them to whatever port that you want to access. Uh, remember, when we're looking at this, this very first number is the, the port that you'll be accessing on your Docker server. And the second port is the port that it's expecting inside of the container. So if you're gonna change any of them, just change this first one, you'll be fine. Uh, next up, we have our volumes and they've set it up kind of how we like it anyway. We prefer to have the, the Docker volume created within Portainer. Uh, are doing that there, perfect. Um, there's a temporary folder that's going to create and I'm fine with that. I don't really need it to go anywhere specifically, but if you want to change that, you can. Uh, let's see here, environment, we can leave as port 8081. I guess he's giving you the ability to change the port that the container's listening on, uh, but that doesn't really matter too much to us. Uh, we just need to know what it is. All right, so after that, I think that's about all we need really, because we've got our Volumes being created, a, res a restart policy set. Like I said, there's not much to this, but still dig it. All right, so let's go down here and let's click on deploy. All right, once we have that all finished, uh, we can click on the stack and see that it is starting. I can check the logs, nothing there that gives me any sort of pause. Uh, let's do this. So we are going to be setting this up with Nginx Proxy Manager. So let's make sure that the Nginx container is joined to the same network as our Rebaw. So go into Nginx. Let's scroll all the way to the bottom. Let's select the, the network that uh, it's going to be connected to, which is going to be our Rebaw default. And let's zoom out. And I'm just going to click on Join Network. All right, so once we have joined that network, we can scroll down, see that we are connected. Great. All right, so next up, let's set up our subdomain. So let's go to, I'm going to use my name cheap. Uh, that's where my DNS server is set up. But if you're using GoDaddy or something else, that's totally cool. Uh, let's see. I'm going to call this. I'm going to add a new record and I'm going to make it an A record. I'm going to call this a convert. And I'm going to use the same IP address as my server, my external. And I'm going to hit save settings here. All right. So once that's uh, saved, I know that my subdomain is uh, convert.senhow.com. So that's how I'm going to get to my, my new website. Right, so let's go to Nginx. All right, and let's add a proxy host. We're going to call it convert.senhow.com. All right, now we need a, a forward host name or IP address. Let's run over here to, to Portainer and let's find that out. I'm going to go to containers. Here it is right here. I'm going to copy that. Go back to my Nginx and paste it here. Oops, got me a little space. All right, no spaces, no spaces. All right, so now it's asking us for a port. And I hope you remember what that was. I totally forgot. No, I, just, I remember. Uh, let's see. Let's do this. Um, let's make sure that I do get the right one. If I go back to my compose file, remember, we're going to be looking for this port. This is the one that's expecting to see traffic on and my container. So I'm going to copy this port, which is 8081. And now I'm going to go back to Nginx and paste that. Good, no spaces. All right. Again, I'm going to do my uh, block common exploits and allow WebSocket support and hit save. 
once we are done there, uh, let's make it encrypted. I mean, why not? It doesn't cost anything. All right, so let's do that. Let's go in here. Remember, it's saying HTTP only right here. So let's click on my little edit for this uh, domain, this little host, and let's go to SSL. And then let's go and let's drop this down and we're going to request an SSL cert. I'm going to force that. I don't want any unencrypted traffic. I'm also going to agree to the terms of service and let's hit save. So once this gets done spinning, cool. Uh, I don't see any errors. It looks like we have Let's Encrypt set up and we are now ready to navigate to our new site. Let's give it a shot. I'm going to click on the little link here. And if we did everything right, here is our site up and running. All right, well, that pretty much sums it up. I hope you found this video helpful. It was short and sweet and to the point, just the way I like my videos. And if you have any questions, though, or any comments, hey man, leave them down in the section below. Otherwise, if you liked this video, maybe consider giving me a thumbs up. Or if you hated it, that's OK to give me a thumbs down, too. It lets me know what you guys like what you like to see and what you don't. All right. Well, I hope you have a good one and I will see you guys in the next video.